I just want to talk. <clears throat> Can I just talk with us? Just casual. Just bringing up a little conversation. I just want to talk. I was raised in the rural south in Mississippi. Actually on a plantation. I did not know. I thought it was a town. But I have grown to learn it was a plantation. And the only good thing about this place was you was almost self-sufficient. My people produced, raised almost everything they, they need on this land that did not belong to them, mind you. But it made no difference. They had access to the land. And they were so self-sufficient to a certain degree. And when you're self-sufficient, when you grow the corn, the wheat, the tomatoes, the okra, the potatoes, when you raise the hogs and the cows and the chickens and goats or whatever, when you're self-sufficient, unlike city folks <laughs> who have no idea, some of y'all city folks have never seen an apple tree. You never went out in a wheat field never seen a cow in real time probably never even seen a chicken only thing you know is you go to your locally <laughs> locally <laughs> you go to your local grocery store and everything is packaged all nice and pretty but being an old farm boy like this brother here I had to see certain things and one of the things that bothered me was if you are a meat eater you had to kill the cow the chicken You had to kill those animals, the cow, the chicken, the pig. And once you start doing it or get used to it, I guess, I don't know if you can get used to death, but I saw my grandfather and they would shoot the pig or the cow in the head or they would take the chickens and chop their heads off and or or wring the chicken's neck and no big deal. I mean this is this is survival. This is how we live. But that is the reality of our life. In order for us to live, something must die. Whether it is plant or animal, something must die. That's our existence. That's life. We must eat. If we don't eat, if we don't drink, it won't take long, we'll, we'll die. Some of these animals, as a child, they became like a pet, but they were not pets. They were <laughs> food. And it was so sad to see the pig that I like or the cow or the chicken or a goat or whatever, it was sad when it was time that my grandfather had to choose one of these animals 
you know, to slaughter. This is our reality, and you cannot, I just can't, it's sad, but it's just a reality. However, there's another side of this, and that is the side where we kill for pleasure, we kill for benefit, we kill for joy, we kill because it makes us happy. One of the scenes from Spike Lee's movie that I really, really, I enjoyed the whole movie, but one scene that makes me cry, I can't help from crying because I can almost imagine myself being there. That was the assassination of this brother, Malcolm X. I can almost feel myself being in his position. And I wonder to myself, how can people, how can human beings have so much hate, so much dislike that you murder and you find it easy to pull the trigger and kill another human being? I remember... I shot a robin with my BB gun as a child. And I watched that robin close his eyes and die. That hurt me. It's, it bothers me even to this day. If it didn't, I wouldn't be talking to you about it. So here's a robin that I'm crying over, a, a little bird that probably only have a lifespan of a year or two. And we can easily talk about murdering and killing other human beings. Abortion is easy for some people. Murder and dropping bombs on folks. There's no conscience. This is what I this is what I want to talk to us about. I, we have no conscience. It's easy to murder. There are those who see this picture and they actually are happy. It brings them joy and pleasure. Hate made them sick. What did this man really, really do to deserve that his life be taken? All over the world, since ancient times, just murder, killing, raping, robbing, pillaging, stealing. No kind of conscience. But the human being is supposed to be better than the lion, better than the bear, better than the bee and the ant, better than the hyenas and the snakes. And the human being is the most destructive, the most violent, the most wicked life form on this planet. There are those who actually celebrate this man's demise, hate his children because they come from his loin. I don't like the children either. They need to be dead too. One of Brother Malcolm's babies asked her mother, are they going to kill us too? It is just my opinion, just my belief. I believe that Brother Malcolm decided to put himself in a position to be killed to spare his family. That's my opinion. Because clearly, the people that he's dealing with, they threw a bomb in his house. They did not care about women and children. They didn't give a damn. I just hate this man. Kill him. And so, in this nation and around the world, 
many of us claim to be peace lovers uh, and whatever. I love peace. We go to violent movies. People getting their heads chopped off and raped and murdered and bombs and even the superheroes killing and maiming, destroying destruction. Murder is entertainment. Rape is entertainment. But then we want to turn around and be taken seriously when we view rape, child molestation and sex trafficking and abuse and neglect and starvation. We go to the movies and we watch video. This is entertainment for us. It's your your contradictory in your behavior. Is it bad or is it good? One or the other. Not only do we like violence, it's so easy to kill. We like to kill people spiritually, as they say, or mentally. So we slander people, gossip, try to destroy their reputation. There are those who think I find, who or who may think that I find some kind of joy in speaking ill of people, I do not. Because slander and gossip is no better than physical murder. It's the same attempt. You throwing bullets, you dropping bombs, trying to kill a person, not physically, but in another manner. And we find joy and we laugh and we giggle it's so easy to kill. We find joy, the human being, regardless of your race, because these behaviors you will find in all the races, regardless, black, white, red, yellow, don't make any difference. We find it easy to murder and kill and cause pain and hurt, joy and pleasure and suffering. But at the same time, we turn around and we talk about humanitarian efforts and save the planet. And it's very contradictory when our lifestyle is violent. Our religion is filled with violence. The Quran and Bible, violent books everything about us. Where does the peace come from? Where does this love come from? When the holy books themselves is is filled with violence. Where is the expressions of all this love and peace and joy? And why hasn't it changed the world? It's been in the world and around human beings for thousands of years and the human being with all This religious dogma and teachings is still violent. Violence is easy to kill. I wonder about the mindset of somebody that could just walk up and pull a trigger and murder somebody with their wife and their children in the audience Oh my God, I can't. These soldiers dropping bombs on children and innocent people. It don't make no difference killing people. Why? It's not to survive, not to eat. Y'all done your comments. I want to talk about, I want us to discuss how, you know, why is it so easy? For us to murder. Why is it so easy. To kill. Whether it is physically. Or mentally. Let's talk about it.